ladies and gentlemen, to listen to some of our development partners. Please a big round of applause to Senior Coordinator Africa Continental Qualifications Framework Project 11, Ms. Eduarda Castelbranco. Welcome, welcome. Makofia Ketavatari. Thank you. Eduardo Castel Branco on behalf of the project African Continental Qualifications Framework. Excellencies, representatives, high level representatives of the government, all stakeholders in this room, it's with immense joy and emotion that I stand here and I want to thank very much. Dr. Alice Kande and PNQA for the invitation. So, um, the, uh, I'd like to just uh, take a few minutes of your time for a statement, um, and I was asked to say a few words about also RPL in global terms and especially in African terms. So, again, uh, on behalf of the implement, implementation co co and coordination team of the African Union project supporting implementation of the ACQF, African Continental Qualifications Framework 2, not 11, we express sincere gratitude for your invitation to participate in such a celebration of the power of learning. This testifies that the impossible becomes possible when there is a common vision and joint commitment of all levels of governance and stakeholders in a country. Your country, Kenya, takes this matter seriously. You are an example. The highest authority of the country, the President of the Republic, champions RPL. This is unseen. This is a marvelous example. The private sector is an engine of RPL and the NQF is the home and provides the coherence to all this with KNQA. We need such examples across the continent, the African continent. Besides a, relevance, a relevant policy, there is a concrete implementation and to prove it, the RPL graduates, marvelous, looking wonderful, so encouraging this image and they are proud different demographics we have here in the room they are all proud because their experience their knowledge their skills now are recognized and visible their lives have now so much more and better opportunity this is a glorious day for Kenya, but it is also meaningful for Africa and the world. Because, because your country is not only innovating, but it's also giving this innovation a highly visible and assured place in the ecosystem of lifelong learning and employability for all population groups. From being a pilot experiment, RPL becomes integral part of this education training system, qualifications system. Let me say a few words about the fact that RPL is even more important nowadays that we are all living, all our countries of the world, through a very deep, wide and multiple layer transformation. So our world is a transformation and skills are key. The most recent global data and analysis, such as the 2023 reports of the World Economic Forum on the future of jobs, demonstrates that the full potential of the green economy, the green economic growth, and also sustainable society, as well as the digital and AI transformation, will be determined by the capacity of governments and society, societal forces to boost access 
to learning, to upskilling and reskilling in diverse and novel approaches. These novel approaches have already been mentioned today, and thank you very much, Professor Mike Curia. Approaches that combine all types and modalities and contexts of learning. The new types of certification, the new types of credentials, small micro learning, the combination with the full qualifications and the recognition of the skills and competences people acquire uh, in life and at work. This report of the World Economic Forum also tells us that most, uh, almost 50% of the core skills of the working population will have to change in a period of five years. That's immense, and this is an, that's also an immense call to education and training systems, qualification systems. And uh, to adapt uh, to, to the, this trans to transformation and to remain employable, imagine the effort in retraining, upskilling, and reskilling. This will require from each ecosystem of skills development a very large effort to be able to adapt, to deliver, and lead lead on the transformation so that education and training systems, qualifications are not lagging behind the pace of transformation. Recognition of prior learning gives us wings, wings, gives us new opportunities to further education and training and to decent jobs, creates bridges to new learning. It is an ally of the reskilling and upskilling pathways we all need to embrace. It's a source of innovation and improvements in learning and also in assessment, modalities, mechanisms, tools of learning outcomes. It's therefore an innovation and a change, uh, a, a, a game changer in education and training uh, methods themselves. It's a new paradigm, a paradigm, a paradigm that all learning matters. Recognition of prior learning as a growing space in qualification systems globally, regional communities as well as countries are increasingly adopting our RPL policies and implementation mechanisms closely associated with the national qualification system. That's the case, for example, of the 27 EU member states. In fact, since 2020, 2012, the EU adopted a wide orientation and roadmap to foster and to boost development and implementation of RPL across all European Union member states. And the monitoring, steering, coordination of this process is actually done by the European Qualifications Framework Advisory Group. So uh, this, um, the, the, this recommendation on validation, as RPL is called in the, in the EU, is used for a wide range of purposes, uses, policy uses, and for groups, different population and demographics groups, including to support early school leavers and, dro and school dropouts. So the range of uses of RPL is very wide, and that's a point we'd like to make here. It's not only to acquire a full qualification, but various ranges of needs and possibilities, and also the wishes of these very autonomous learners uh, we, and candidates who have the courage to embrace RPL as a new uh, pathway in their lives. In the context of Africa, and I'm not going to take much more time, RPL has long-standing roots, actually, in form of traditional methods and instruments, such as, for example, trade tests. But the surge, the growth of national qualification frameworks in the growing, a growing number of African countries is now visibly contributing to rethink and modernize RPL, so opening up to more flexible and personalized uh, forms of use, linking to the new reflection on micro-credentials, again, thank you, to Professor Mike, Mike Curia, for lifelong learning and employability. And that's the case, for example, in countries that are currently working with the project ACQF2, such as Ghana and Cabo Verde, West Africa, Angola, Mozambique, Iswatini, Seychelles, this is the SADC region, Mauritius as well in which there is a full clarity across, across the government that NQF and RPL are both 
part of the same ecosystem of lifelong learning and qualifications. So countries with long NQF history, such as Mauritius, Seychelles, have now embarked in, in rethinking and review of the NQF, which give a new light, a new strength to lifelong learning, to articulation, to progression, because these are actually the big, the important purposes of any national qualifications framework. And as this means also to enhancements, to recognition of prior learning and other related policies, such as credit, accumulation and transfer. So in the countries that are new, countries that have approved and are now starting implementation of new NQF, so the new generation national qualifications frameworks, RPL now is being integrated from the very start in the NQF policy document, in the NQF policy implementation tools and roadmaps. I am going to complete very soon, Mr. Moderator, just a few additional words. The benefits of RPL are expressed at all levels, at level of the learner or candidate, the education and employment system, the companies, the employers, the society and the government, all actually benefit from well-implemented RPL. Uh, in, cer in certain countries, RPL has played a fundamental role in qualifying large population groups that has no documentation for the skills they possessed and making the routes to further education more inclusive and accessible. And at the same time, making the economy more competitive. In other countries, RPL is a space for government and companies to better regulate employment in the emerging and strategic economic sectors by providing access to qualifications to employees who have experienced skills motivation. In the third group of countries, there is a huge pressure from inflow of refugees and migrants as well as inflow uh, of returning migrants from labor market experiences in other countries. And so this is another very important use of uh, RPL adapted to the different contexts. Um, let me say that if I would use just a few kind of keywords, RPL means identifying the needs, means policy, means uh, participatory inclusive governance where all players are part of the game, means uh, implementation tools and methods, and it means also buy-in. It means take-up. In many countries, RPL is suffering from low take-up of the population. Why? Because there is not enough guidance and communication. Data and monitoring and evaluation is fundamental to make RPL systems functional and effective. And the link with the NQF, let me emphasize this once again. So I saw with great pleasure that all the qualifications awarded here in the case of Kenya, they bear the national qualifications level. That's really amazing and as I can only congratulate you for, for such an achievement. RPL is to become a full member and part of education and qualification systems. Not a parallel, not an alternative anymore, but part of that ecosystem. And when this happens, then the skills revolution is, the, is then uh, re, really happening. And to conclude, I just want to say that next week the ACQF2 project is going to publish the report of the RPL survey that was conducted across the continents. And it is, this, this survey has very interesting, um, I, say, I would say very, very uh, self-explanatory also results. Uh, including on the high interest motivation of all countries to implement, to develop and implement RPL systems, as well as on the world of work that has to be done to get there. And um, the, the, the African continent has everything, has all the necessary power to solve the problems, to build hope, to provide new opportunities. That's the spirit of the African Union Agenda 20, 2063, the Africa we want. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much indeed.